I'll, I'll tell you a couple of things about the House of Acts and the Votto. Um, it started in 1968. Danny Sanchez reminded me of that the other day. Uh, started in 68. And it was, it was uh, an adventure. It was an adventure. And I would go up there from time to time trying to straighten out their theology because they were imbibing in all kinds of things. And they had invited a man by the name of Victor Paul Werewill. He's the guy that started the group called The Way International. And he was teaching them that it's okay to smoke dope. He told them it's okay to switch partners with everybody else's wives. He claimed to have the only authentic version of the New Testament, uh, and it was in Aramaic. Forget the Greek. And he said, in my New Testament, there were not three crosses on Calvary. There were five. He says, you guys think there were only three crosses, a thief on each side and Jesus in the middle. He says, I got to tell you, you've been duped. Well, he convinced about half that house of that, and that was his story. I mean, it was either believe that or not. So what happened is Lonnie invited me up to debate. He, Lonnie knew it was wrong. And so I went up on two different occasions. All the people were there, and I debated where will. Eventually, uh, it led to a, a, a crisis there in the house, and the place dissolved. Everybody went their own way, and Lonnie went down to Costa Mesa. He'd gotten married. Because of the confusion in that circumstance, um, the house broke up. And so uh, Lonnie went down, and sometime later, that's when he started the House of Miracles. And I got a call from Lonnie uh, and asking me to bring David Hoyt, Danny Sands, and Rick Sachs down to them because he wanted us to meet some people they've been contacting. So a, a hot summer day, we drove down and uh, in Costa Mesa found the, the House of Miracles. And that night, Chuck Smith and about five or six of his deacons came over. We're all sitting in the living room. They all have white shirts on, short sleeves, and ties, every one of them. And we're here, all the hippie guys, we're all sitting on the rug in the middle of the room. And uh, I think Chuck and those guys were from a, a four-square gospel church. I'm not sure. But um, there wasn't any such thing as Calvary Chapel at that point. But Chuck and those guys were realizing Lonnie and these guys needed stability and help. They needed some older brothers around to help them. And so afterwards, after those guys left, we said, yeah, you got to go with them. All four of us said, no, no, this is the right thing. You need to be with these guys. And then we drove down. Lonnie says, I've got another group of people you to, for you to meet. So we went, we drove down to Huntington Beach it's on the coast, a little bit south, and to a place called the Golden Bear. I'd forgotten the town and the name. And Rick Sachs, in my conversation with him just a few days ago, he said, no, Kent, it was Huntington Beach, and it was, the restaurant was a Golden Bear, but it was David Berg, later known as David Moses Berg, started the Children of God. And uh, we went in. It was a wild, crazy place. And we met with him and two of his daughters and one of his sons out in the back. They, he was dressed in a black suit, very straight, and they wouldn't get close to us. They wouldn't come up and shake hands with us. We we were probably about 10 yards plus apart in the back of this restaurant. And um, we talked with them, and they gave us a very weird feeling. We didn't know what to make of it. And uh, But uh, what they had been doing, and the reason Lonnie was concerned, because they were sending out evangelists all over that area. South Los Angeles, and they were running into him in the streets, you know, and so on. So he, you know, Lonnie just wanted us to get a, um, get a, get a load of who these people were. And 
what a contrast. On the one hand, yeah, Chuck Smith, yeah, David Berg, no. It was on the same evening. It was really unusual. We'd never, I'd never known anything about them, but they were very polite gentlemen. They were obviously mature, sophisticated Christians, very solid, and we liked that, that, that strength that they had. Uh, and uh, we couldn't help but recommend that they go and be a part of that. Uh, we were just talking back and forth um, and trying to get a handle on who we were. They were trying, they, they wanted us, to, the, Lonnie and those guys, to come in and be a part of them. Um, but I, I can just remember Chuck sitting there in a chair, leaning forward, talking, surrounded by his deacons and elders, whatever they were. And uh, it, it only lasted probably about an hour. But, but we asked some pretty, pretty strong questions. Uh, Danny talked, David talked, Rick talked, I did. And we were very satisfied with these guys because we were a little worried about Lonnie. I'd only heard him testify on the street to groups, individuals. I'd, I'd never, uh, I doubt that he could have put a, much of a sermon together, uh, but he didn't need to. Uh, you know, there's, just, everybody knew it. Everybody knew that the Holy Spirit was upon this guy. And, he, you know, he was a, a small, frail man, not a big guy. He had, you would never have been afraid of him. A 10-year-old kid wouldn't have been afraid of Lonnie Frisbee in a fight. And he was not a scary guy. He was a very mellow, easygoing, soft-spoken guy. 